Welcome guys and girls to this lecture. In this lecture, we're going to learn about cluster autoscaler. Uh, so in the last video, we learned about horizontal pod autoscaler or HPA. Uh, please make sure you guys and girls watch that video before watching this one. Uh, it's gonna make more sense if you do it in that order. So one thing to uh, note very quickly that HPA works on actual CPU utilization. Uh, so you can see the CPU of the pods as it goes up beyond a certain limit, HPA kicks in uh, and then tells the replica set to increase the replica and then more pods spawn up. Okay, so with that knowledge in mind, uh, let's take a look at cluster autoscaler. Uh, so on the left, let's say we have our deployment manifest file. Uh, you are deploying 20 replicas of this pod and this pod is requesting 500 millicore of CPU, basically a half of a virtual CPU. Note that there is no traffic in this scenario. The CPU utilization for this pod uh, is at 0%. And we are assuming this cluster has only one worker node of M5 large. And how much uh, CPU uh, this deployment is requesting? It's requesting 500 millicore for each pod multiplied by 20 replicas. So that's 10,000 millicores uh, divided by 1,000. So basically 10 vCPUs. And one node, if we assume, has two vCPU. So basically it can accommodate four pods and four pods will spin up in this uh, node, assuming it's EC2 M5 large. Now here is the big difference between HPA and cluster autoscaler. So at this point, even though there is no traffic and CPU utilization is at 0%, cluster autoscaler will kick in. Uh, it, will, it checks the requested amount of CPU every 10 seconds or so. And at this point, it will see, oh, this deployment manifest on the left is requesting 10 vCPU, but I only have two vCPU. So cluster autoscaler will spin up four more M5 large. So HPA scales pod in a node, Cluster autoscaler scales node in a cluster. So this part actually uh, depends on individual cloud provider. Uh, so forget about Kubernetes. Uh, how does EC2 scale? Autoscaling group, right? So basically you put EC2s in autoscaling group and you can tell autoscaling group to scale the EC2s using the desired number of EC2s and then it will start scaling. Since we are running this on EKS and underlying this is EC2, it has to rely on autoscaling group as well. Uh, so there are two components to cluster autoscaler. One part is this open source cluster autoscaler, which keeps monitoring how much CPU is being requested and how many vCPU uh, the cluster currently have. And then if the requested CPU, not the actual CPU usage, if the requested CPU goes above what's currently available, cluster autoscaler is gonna tell the EC2 autoscaling group, hey, can you provision more nodes? So the autoscaling group, uh, which is tied to the EKS, uh, but under the hood, it's basically your regular EC2 autoscaling group, and we're gonna see that in the demo, uh, it spins up more nodes. Uh, so let's jump into a demo. Uh, so some steps, I'm gonna follow this AWS documentation. Like I said, since you have to uh, combine these two different components, uh, so it's a little finicky. So I'm gonna show you the steps I follow and then you have to do some extra steps uh, to have the demo working. So I'm gonna go through them. So all right, with that being said, uh, let's spin up a cluster and let's get rolling. Okay, so for this demo, we are going to use uh, AWS Cloud9. Okay, I opened up the documentation. Uh, okay, so I'm gonna copy this command and go back to Cloud9, paste it, and then uh, press enter, and it should go uh, spin up the cluster with the version 1.15. Uh, so this is gonna create a managed node group, and this dash dash ASG access means uh, it will uh, create the auto scaling group. Uh, along with the IAM uh, roles necessary on the EC2 uh, to be accessed by autoscaling group. So we're gonna take a look after the cluster comes up. And by default, uh, if you don't specify any EC2 family type, 
If you just do EKS CTL create cluster, then by default, it's gonna create two M5 large. Okay, I'm gonna pause the video and come back once the cluster is up and running. Okay, cluster is up and running. Uh, I'm gonna go back to the reference and see the next steps. So we created a cluster with a single managed node group that spans multiple availability zone. Uh, so we can skip this step. We also can skip this uh, IAM policy step. Uh, so I'm going to show you real quick. So if I go back to the console, okay, let's go to EC2. And then these two M5 larges are the worker nodes. Uh, let's click IAM role. Okay, see it created an inline policy. So if I click this, uh, this has the IAM policy to access the auto scaling. Uh, so let's check out the auto scaling groups as well. Okay, let's scroll down. Uh, here we go, auto scaling group. I'm gonna open in a new tab. Okay, so uh, that stack also created a auto scaling group, which is gonna work as the auto scaler for our um, cluster. Okay, so for now, let's go back and find the next step. Okay, so you can skip all that, the IAM policy, autoscaling group tags. Okay, so deploy the cluster autoscaler. So copy this, uh, go to the cloud nine. Let's make it a little bigger. Okay, and let's just paste. Okay, so the autoscaler is created. <laughs> Uh, but you have to go change some stuff. You have to input the cluster name and all that stuff. Uh, so the next step is add the cluster autoscaler.kubernetes io slash safe to evict annotation to the deployment with the following command. So you can just copy this, go back to cloud nine, test this. Okay, go back to the instructions. Okay, so this is a little bit of the finicky part. So you have to go change uh, the deployment file. Okay, uh, edit the cluster autoscaler deployment with the following command. So copy this, uh, paste it here. So it's gonna open the Vi editor. So you have to be a little careful. You can scroll down. Okay, so this is the place. So that your cluster name. So I'm gonna make it a little bigger. Okay, how about I make it a little bigger? Okay, here we go. So I type X, X deletes in the Vi editor. So it's a little painful, but uh, whatever. Okay, the name of the EKS cluster is uh, my cluster. So I wanna come back. Okay, my cluster. And then you have to paste two lines. How about that? Okay. So you have to paste these two lines. So let's copy this one. Okay, and then I'm gonna delete this line. Okay, looks good. So this should set up the autoscaler. Uh, so let's save this. So escape colon WQ, that's how file editor works. Press enter, so edited. Now you have to find out uh, what is the cluster autoscaler version that matches your cluster Kubernetes version. Uh, so for uh, this cluster, if you guys and girls remember, uh, we said uh, version is 1.15. Uh, so we're gonna go look for the autoscaler version for this uh, Kubernetes 1.15. So click this. So you have to scroll down to 1.15. Okay, so the latest version is 1.15.6. Okay, so I remember this. So this is the latest cluster autoscaler version for Kubernetes version 1.15. Okay, then in this command, we're gonna use that. So this is basically um, sets the cluster autoscaler image tag to the version. So if I paste this and then I edited it to version 1.15.6. So press enter. Okay, image updated. That should be it. Like at this point, the cluster autoscaler is set. Uh, so this part belongs to Kubernetes. So this is open source. Uh, so how can you test it that it's set up? 
So if you go to this log, so this command, so you will see something like uh, reading stuff, calculating unneeded nodes, like this kind of stuff. Uh, but if something is not right, then you will see that it doesn't have access or cannot uh, acquire lease, uh, that kind of message. Okay, so I'm gonna interrupt this, control C. So now comes the part that you have to change on top of this. So let me maximize this. So at this point, the Kubernetes uh, autoscaler is set. Uh, but remember, we said cluster autoscaler is made of two components. One is the open source uh, Kubernetes autoscaler. And the second part is depending on your cloud's implementation. Uh, so if we go back to our console, so the second part in this case is AWS. Uh, so even if the cluster wants to scale, it cannot because that is controlled by the autoscaler. Uh, so if we go to our autoscaler, see the autoscaler says a min and max number of node is two. So even the cluster autoscaler is gonna ask the cluster to scale. This autoscaling group, which is AWS autoscaling group, won't be able to scale because the min and max is set at two. So we're gonna edit this, okay? so. Um, let me make this a little smaller, okay. Click edit. So we are gonna change this maximum capacity to, how about five? Okay, and then scroll down, click update. Okay, so we changed the auto scaling group. So if we go to EC2, nothing should change because we did not schedule any deployment yet, right? Uh, so now the deployment part. Uh, so if you guys and girls remember from our lecture, that it, you don't really need to uh, use the pod uh, because cluster autoscalers goes by this uh, requested amount. See, there is no service here. So I'm not even gonna call this uh, deployment. I'm just gonna deploy. Uh, but cluster autoscaler is just gonna look into these requests and then see if the requested CPU goes above the available uh, node CPUs. Uh, and if it is, then it's gonna just scale the nodes. It doesn't matter, you can use any image, literally don't matter. All it matters is you should have this resources section. And then I am putting requested CPU as 500M, which is uh, half of a virtual CPU, so 500 millicore. And the limits doesn't matter, because we are not gonna execute the application. Okay, and then I set the replica as 20, so <laughs> it requires a lot of vCPUs, way more than our two node M5 large. So basically it will request, uh, so two of these, two of the replica is one vCPU, so two of the replicas will be 1000 millicore. So basically we need uh, 10 vCPUs, uh, but two nodes of M5 large has what, four uh, vCPUs, because each M5 large has two vCPU. So I'm just gonna copy this deployment file, go back to Cloud9, create a file, how about CA, which is cluster autoscaler, deployment.yaml, okay? Open this, let's resize this a little bit. Okay, let's save this. Okay, now we are going to deploy this in our cluster. Okay, how do we deploy? kubectl apply minus F, and then the name. Here we go, let's press enter. Cluster autoscaler, we check this every 10 seconds and soon uh, you should see uh, the EC2 is ramping up. So I'm gonna go back to the console. So this is the autoscaler group. So it should start changing here as well. Okay, see it says status updating. See the desired capacity was two, now it became five. If I go to EC2 and refresh this, uh, you'll see the five EC2 uh, instances are running. Uh, so remember this again, that we did not have to run this pod, right? All we did was uh, deploy the deployment. We did not actually have to execute the application. Okay, so let's run uh, some of our standard commands, kubectl get pods. Okay, so you can see they are all pending. They will soon 
started running. Okay, here you go. You can see uh, things are getting scheduled in the new nodes. Okay, so it's scaled up. So that's how cluster autoscaler works. So I wanted to show you guys and girls one more thing. Uh, so now I will uh, delete all this deployment, right? So the requested CPU should come down and cluster autoscaler should scale the cluster down. So the thing I wanted to show you is uh, it's not immediate. So the scale up is immediate because a cluster autoscaler checks every 10 seconds. And then if the requested CPU is high, it scales up. Scale down, there's a cooldown period. It is 10 minutes by default. This cooldown is there to avoid yo-yo kind of situation. Like let's say the traffic went down for a minute or something and then you scale down and then traffic went up and then you have to scale up again. Uh, so the cluster doesn't want to scale down, scale up, scale down, scale up like every minute. Uh, so there is a cooldown once the nodes are scaled up. It waits for a predefined amount of time to see if the traffic is indeed down. And if it is down, then it comes down. Uh, you can tweak this uh, time, but for this demo, we are not going to go tweak it. Okay, so uh, how do you delete this? Uh, so the name of this deployment is PHP Apache. Uh, so I'm just going to go and uh, delete the deployment. So kubectl delete deployment php dash apache. Okay, delete it. So if I do kubectl get pods now, you should see things are terminating. Okay, here you go. Uh, so let it terminate. Okay, so three left. Okay, so no pods left at this point. Uh, but if I go to EC2, you will still see those five m5.large running uh, for like 10 minutes. And likewise, if I go to auto scaling, uh, you will see the desired capacity is still set to five. Uh, so it's gonna wait around 10 minutes before it starts coming down. Uh, okay, I'm gonna pause the video and come back after a few minutes. All right, so it's uh, after 10 minutes and you can see now the auto scaling group is changing this and then the desired got changed from five to two, which is the original uh, desired state. So let's go to EC2, let's click this. Okay, so you can see EC2s are starting to shut down. So, all right, so remember this uh, scaling up is faster, scaling down, there is a cooldown period. Uh, last thing, I don't want to keep paying for those M5 larges. <laughs> so I'm gonna delete my cluster. So I'm gonna get the name, EKSCTL GLED cluster. So my cluster, and then I'll type EKSCTL delete cluster dash dash name equals to my cluster. Okay, and my cluster is deleted. All right, guys and girls, that is the video. If you like the video, click the like button, smash it if you're into that kind of stuff, and subscribe. I have a bunch of other helpful videos on AWS and how to switch your career. Uh, check them out. Uh, all right, I'll see you guys and girls in the next video. Bye.